Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm excited. I'm always excited when I work on cars, but today's video, we're we'll making the AU probably not look as good, but perform just as good. So I've been working on an exhaust system for it off camera and I've sort of got something together now to show you guys. As well as I'm gonna have to be mucking around with the rear suspension setup because the uh, the pipes we put on are a bit too low. But here's the beast. As you can see, she's a bit muddy because the backyard is very muddy. It's been raining, as you can see all the crap on the ground, but she's very jacked up in the back and I'll show you why. <laughs> I'll show you what's holding her actually. Look at all this crap mud shit that's on it. It's got blocks of wood in the springs. And the reason I do that was to get it into the backyard because the car's so low. And the actual reason why is these babies right here. You like them guys? I like them. <laughs> so if you don't already know, if you go back to a few videos ago, the AU was not allowed on track because of the exhaust that ended uh, before the, the body of the vehicle. And they don't allow that on track, unfortunately. So we got turned around and had to make a new system for it. So that's what I have done over here. But the only thing is, because the car's so low at the back, because I've cut two coils out of the back, originally those blast pipes were literally just sitting on the floor because the car was so low. So I've had to put it on blocks just to get it to move around. So what I'm gonna do is actually try and match the height with the front and that'll still give us enough clearance on the bottom. And we have been gifted standard springs from our good buddy, Brandon. So Brandon's a familiar face on the channel. He's gifted those to us uh, for this car. So at the moment, this was cut two coils and uh, it was very sacked. It looked awesome, but to perform, it wouldn't be the best because it's just uh, just the side exit we want to go is uh, is too low. But you can see with the wood, like we still have a bit of clearance now. Now you can sort of see where we're going to go. So if we drop an inch, we should still, like we're probably going to go down, I reckon, three inches. So it's still going to get close, but it's going to be nowhere near where it was before. Before, I couldn't even get out of my garage. And this is what it did to my bloody concrete. My fresh concrete, my new house, guys. I'm not happy about that, but... Oh well, you live, you learn. But you can see I've sort of pointed them uh, so they're sort of facing back so they don't get any fumes or anything. It sounds amazing. Actually, you know what? Instead of talking about it, let's hear it. guys it's so freaking loud but it sounds so good and it's gotten rid of that stupid rasp it had on diesel it sounded freaking horrible so when we jack it up and do the rear springs i'll show you exactly what we've done for our exhaust system so i sort of mocked it up off camera and tacked it all together i uh, just used bits of pipe i had laying around the house i even used some of my old vl exhaust system i had lying down the side of my house i was going to film it but at the end of the day i just wanted something to do in my spare time you know after work and that so right now i'll definitely cover the rear end and seeing how close we get now i have actually cut the skirt around the pipes you probably, oh, it's hard to see, but yeah, you probably see there, but I've cut the skirt up. So the pipes actually sit up a little bit higher. I've also made a hanger down there with a hose clamp. I welded that all on and then made it out of the VL exhaust I had lying around. So that's held up. What I actually might do is I'll jack the car up, take the blocks of wood out, lower it, and show you guys how close that exhaust system is to the ground, even on a complete flat surface. All right, so just got the two pieces of wood out there. Just have these two on top of the spring like that, just to space it out. Now I'm going to lower it down, now hopefully those springs sit into position because <laughs> of choppy life. Usually I've got to wrestle them in, but might make a big bang. There we go. <laughs> and yeah, there you go. So you can just see how sacked we are. And look at the blast pipes. <laughs> They're literally almost on the ground, especially the, the back of it over there, almost touching the floor. So it looks so good sacked, like I love it so much. If we're going to be running that side exhaust, we need to really, really, really address that. Um, but the front, we've actually raised the front up and that's got a bit of wheel gap there, so that's perfect. So if we can make it match the rear, but then like when it's actually on song and on throttle, it should squat down a bit. But it's more so, you know, getting on off the trailer, moving around the backyard and that, don't want to get them caught up. One thing I sort of wish I did was actually flange it at the back where it bends to the, uh, to the main section. That way we can just unbolt it, move the car around and then bolt it back on the track. But we can always do that later. But for now, we have these springs to work with. I reckon we'll just cut them down slightly. Later on, if we do decide to do that with the exhaust, cut it, flange it, have it removable, we can actually put those springs back in. But we're eventually gonna go coilovers, guys, so it's not a massive, massive deal. Alrighty, fellas, ladies, gentlemen, turtles, whatever are we? Got you on the phone now because I can use my, uh, my torch on. So what I usually do is I drop the, the watts link down there off. You just unbolt that off and drop those two bars down. It lets the diff just droop down a little bit more. Um, but because they're choppies, they literally look, they're just gonna fall out once we undo that shocker. <gasps> 
So that is me trying to be a shock. But yeah, um, just like last time, if you haven't seen the video of me doing this last time, I sort of go through it a bit more in depth. But I'll put a link to it so you guys can watch a bit more up close and personal. But yeah, all you gotta do really is, it's hard for me to film, but get a shifter or something and uh, lock onto the top of the shocker. Camera will focus where I'm going away, aren't I? Like that. So it locks on. Okay, it's gonna be very hard to do with one hand. I can't remember what size it is actually. And you get your 17. 17 mil spanner, put that on. I'm not gonna be able to do this with one hand, but you know the drill. And like that, she's coming off. You just wanna make sure that center shaft isn't spinning as you're undoing the nut. And then we're gonna undo the shocker at the bottom. Pop it off. Make sure you just keep the cap and rubber in the same orientation that it comes out of. Like that, keep them together. Let's put them on the parcel shelf usually. That shock's nice and free at the top there. Then we undo it from the bottom and slide the shock out. And then we put the new spring in. You literally see that spring's just gonna pop out. But maybe with the other one we put in, there's gonna be another coil. We might have to uh, undo the watch link just to droop the axle down a bit more. Oh well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Now same dealio as last time, we get an 18 mil uh, socket on the front side of where the shock bolt's on and then we get a 18mm spanner on the other side ratchet spanners save your lives obviously i'm going to skip the part where i'm having a hemorrhage trying to get this off but and hopefully it's enough room because you're going to make sure there's enough room at the bottom for the shocker to drop out but just enough so we can pull the spring out and then we can match it with our other spring and just see how much more we want to go in terms of heightening lowering it also i didn't realize when i showed you before guys the car was a little bit lower than it usually is because i still had I still had some stockies in the boot. Uh, any height advantage will be great, especially when my fat ass is in it. All right, I'll continue to get that off and we'll pull it all out. Yeah, I probably should have recorded that. As soon as I took the bolt out, the shock fell through. Just as shocked as I am. There we go. You have the <gasps> out. And now the spring. Oh, it's going to be a freaking mission. To oh. oh, okay. Let's compare it with standard. So that's our cut one on the right and stock one on the left. Bug difference, as you can see. Uh, if we match the top coil up together, we've obviously gone two on this one and this one I think I'm just going to go one. Obviously you measure one and then two, as you can see that one's two, but I think I cut a little bit further up. It was about like 1.8 or something. So look, I'm going to go just one coil off, gives us an extra coil of clearance and we'll see how it sits. Worst case, if the car sits still way too high, then we can, uh, we can modify it later, but for now, It'll definitely help us with uh, clearing those blast pipes. I don't have to mark it, I'll just literally go off that coil and cut it. All right, hopefully you guys can see. I'm gonna go one coil and a little bit down from it. So exact same thing with this one. Building track cars on a budget. Sometimes it do be like that. So, cut our springs, pretty much the same. There's our low, low one. So I'm probably gonna have another, I reckon, inch travel. Probably not gonna look the best, but it will perform, which is what we want. And hopefully the screws are happy with that exhaust system. While we're here, let's have a look at it. Oh, we're under the car. So, actually, you know what? I'll get my phone so I can put some light on it. So these blasters are given to me from a mate, so they're a bit, a bit shit. They've got crappy welds everywhere, but as you can see, I've literally just welded them onto the back of the joiner where it 45s now before i it would come out to about here with like an oval just past here so i actually cut it further back so i could have the blasties come out just enough that they protruded but they're also pointing to the back of the car as well so you can see it joins up with our system keeps going to the cat up the front there they've still got a cat but it's still really loud but yeah that is pretty much it so we just literally tacked on there we got a hanger and then a hose clamp through the rail to hold it. Right now the blast pipes are sitting up, but they still have some movement like that. That's pretty much the system. They sound really good. It looks awesome, like a bad supercar exhaust, except they'd usually come out cut here. If I did that, I'd have to cut up through here, uh, which I can do later on. The only thing is the side of the blast pipe is almost touching the trailing arm there. So I gotta be very careful with that. For now, this is awesome. I'm really happy with it. Come out grouse. Without further ado, I'm gonna whack the springs back in. Drop it down, see how she sits. All right guys, so I'll quickly just put both sides back together. I've just set the springs in the perch so they all line up when I drop it down. So, it's gonna be my first time dropping it down. Genuine reaction, is it gonna to be too high? Is it still gonna to be too low? 
Let's find out. Is there going to be any big bangs? Oh, God, my jack. Oh, yeah, not too bad. Sit on the boot a bit. Oh, it's going to be Bodhi. Oh, it's high as fuck. <laughs> that's actually how it has a clearance, though. That's what we want. Oh, it's much better. Holy shit, yeah. Look at that. Much better. It's very high, but yeah, I reckon even we could snip a little bit more off the coil, but it's not going to be too far off um, matching the front, to be honest. It is very high. <laughs> I reckon for now that's fine. See if it settles a bit. Because the front we did have to raise up a bit because it was touching the guards. Oh god, doesn't that look great? Oh, well, I'm going to take it for a spin around the block and um, see how she goes. See if she scrapes on the driveway again. Guys, it's so loud, guys. but it's nowhere near as droney as it was last time. It sounds so much better, oh my god. It sounds so much better. Oh, it's even got little pops out the side. I don't know if you can hear that. Oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> All right, guys, get back to the house and um, have a looky loo. I can smell the paint. Where I joined it, when I welded it, I, I just painted it up a little bit, so. Oh. It's so much better having the sound coming out the side rather than under me now, it's great. When it was under the body before, the sound was sort of just bounced off the ground, so now it's technically louder, but. Sounds mint. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so happy with that. <laughs> um, with all the windows up, it's actually really quiet. You can't hear it, like give it a bit of a rev and. I just cruised back home with the windows up and it sounded great, like it was nice and quiet. Uh, when you get on it, it's nice and loud, but uh, I'm really happy with that. See if it's settled down anymore. Yeah, it's just a bit high. Let's see if it's matching the front. Put the window down. It's actually not too bad. It's sitting pretty good, just on top of the tire and the front as well. So it's actually almost leveled itself out, which is perfect, that's what we want. Yeah, actually, it actually sort of looks level now that the springs are settled a bit. I reckon that's perfect, guys. Um, it didn't scrape going down the driveway because I got a bit of a, a bit of a hump going down. That's perfect. Um, it sounds really good, nice and uh, nice and healthy. I'm really happy with that, guys. <laughs> I'm really happy with that. It looks so good. So I'd like to say a massive thank you to Brandon for getting me those springs. Thank you so much, dude. That saved me going to the wreckers and trying to pinch some out of a wreckers car. So yeah, I reckon for now, we'll leave it at this height. Um, if it gets a bit too bouncy or boaty, we'll drop it a little bit. Uh, we still need to get coilovers, guys. So that's a big thing we've got to do. Um, yeah, you can see it's all wet. I'm very tempted, but you know, it's my new area. I don't want to shit where I sleep. This car is for the track and uh, that's what it's all about. It's looking so good. I just love the way this car looks with the fairway in front and the, uh, the wheels and gold calipers and god the exhaust looks the exhaust just makes this car look so good now <laughs> i'm so excited guys oh later on we can change setup we can make the pipes go up through the skirt drop the car right down um it didn't scrape going out didn't scrape going out the driveway all the way down there that's good so the big test is going back into our backyard because there's a bit of a, a drop there where the concrete is so it might grab a little bit there but at the end of the day when we load it up onto the trailer and stuff like that we can um take some blocks of wood with us and uh, once it's about to hit on the trailer, we'll just put some blocks of wood behind the wheel, bump the car up over so it doesn't get hung up. Well, guys, that was all I was really planning to do for this episode. I didn't really have anything else to do. I still have to do the hydraulic handbrake setup and stuff like that, but I still got to gather all the parts. What we're going to do is we're going to get two backing plates, cut them in half, bolt two calipers on, run standard lines up to the, the diff, and then tee it off to a hydro inside the car, and just run like a GK Tech standalone hydro setup. That'll be perfect. That way we can lock the rears. Oh, I know one thing they did on the scrutineering last time as well, they put on the sheet, was this uh, this fire extinguisher bracket was loose, but it only moves a tiny bit. I don't know what the hell they're going on about, but I'll um, I'll just try and, uh, I think that's the back bolt. is a bit funny because under here is still the factory foam the carpet sits on. So I might have to cut all that foam out and then put it lower so it's not on the foam because I think it's just squishing on the foam. It was such a shame that we couldn't get on track last time, guys. I was so ready, I was so keen. I was more excited than ever to be on track and um, unfortunately we got turned away. 
Now, obviously, my last video, a lot of you were, were saying that it was pretty harsh for them not to let me on. Um, they did knock back a lot of Falcons and Holdens. Now, I did find out through a few people that messaged me through uh, the organization themselves, as well as a few other people that know of the bloke that did my car. I heard from a few people that he just doesn't like Falcons. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if that's true. I'm not going to speculate anything because at the end of the day, he's doing his job. But if it is true, that is a massive disappointment because at the end of the day, you know, no one has a million dollars to throw at S chassis or R chassis anymore. This is the type of thing that is what's hot at the moment and people can afford. So if you don't like Falcons and Holdens, you can't pick on them. It's just, it's just, it's so shit, honestly. But um, that's if, if that's the case though. Uh, but at the end of the day, we learn, we move on, we drift elsewhere and enjoy ourselves. So hopefully that's a bit of a rant over guys, but I really hope you enjoyed this episode. The AU is so dirty. We're going to give it a wash. It's covered in mud. I am so keen for next event. I hope you like the exhaust guys. Um, the sound is just as good as it looks. <laughs> Yeah, she's pretty much ready for next event. Um, even if with no handbrake, we can just, you know, do the old left foot brake into the corners and scando and whatever. So hopefully the next video is us drifting this. Uh, if not, it'll be the hydro setup for sure. But stay tuned, guys. This car's not going anywhere. I'm going to leave this video here. You all take care, everybody. Have a good one, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.